The penultimate hot tool is the twig tool, which is used for close analysis. As you can see, this tool takes the outline of a tree, but it is actually the twigs, it is the details of close analysis that we are striving to achieve with our students. Um, this tool is very important, it's very symbolic of the growth of that um, piece of analysis from its smallest point upwards into those branches that expand um, into a much wider thinking. It's really important with this tool that you don't put a giant topic into it to try and analyse it because it just won't work. If you put you know, something that's, that's very large and whole, it will just fall apart. This tool is very, very much about looking at the detail, looking at the minutiae of something um, and really kind of pulling it apart, really exploring that. If you look at the shape of this tool, okay, you've got this wider root base. And it's there that the analysis starts from. It's from here that everything else will grow. And it is in that root shape that the idea or the, the object or the item for analysis is written. As you go up through the tree trunk, there is your evidence. Your ev supporting evidence that supports that idea is in the trunk of the tree. And on the branches, all of the, part, the thoughts that you have to do with that original process, that original idea, at the beginning, at the base of the tree, um, is recorded on the branches. Now, again, it's really important that you don't have a fixed number of branches, mm. isn't it? Because the fixed number of branches will give a fixed amount of thoughts, and you want the thoughts to be broad, and you want them there to be a lot of them. And so the branches should be drawn on by the students as they go through the thinking process. I've said to you all along that I was going to demonstrate how to do extended writing from hot tools. And with this, I thought I would actually take a, a, an example and talk you through that um, right the way through from the original idea through to the end process where you have a detailed paragraph. And this is the tool that I'm going to do it through. I'm going to be using Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, The Eagle, in order to demonstrate this tool. Every analysis starts with a question. And if you look on the slide, you will see that the question is there on the left-hand side saying, explore the world of the eagle through the techniques that Tennyson uses to describe it. Take a moment to familiarise yourself with the poem. We now need to look at the key words in that question in order to start our analysis. Explore the world of the eagle through the techniques that Tennyson uses to describe it. And that word techniques is crucial because that is what you are analysing. That question is asking you to analyse techniques. So it is a technique that we need to find um, to actually place in the root of our analysis. For this particular example, I've used alliteration. Okay, a technique that Tennyson uses in that poem. And so I'm going to place the word alliteration in the root of this tree. I now need to come through the root and up into the trunk and provide the evidence that Tennyson uses alliteration. So I need to actually look back to the poem and find the quotation that supports that piece of analysis. And in that root I'm going to place, he clasps the crag with crooked hands. I now have my piece of analysis and my evidence. And a good D-grade student would possibly get to that point. But we're trying to push students forward now into being C-grade students or above and beyond into being A's and A-stars. And it's from this place that that will grow. This analysis, their original thoughts and ideas and interpretations are grown from that root and from that trunk. We now need to consider what those techniques make us feel about the world of the eagle. Because if you remember that question, that's what it was asking us, about the techniques in the world of the eagle. So we're now going to go through and have a look at all the different reasons and feelings and emotions that that piece of alliteration um, provokes in us, or evokes in us, about the world of the eagle. And those will be written around the tree, around the branches of that tree. 
If you look at the analysis, that actually still has to fit that question. It's still growing from that original root. So if you look here, it says the harsh C sound is repeated to make the eagle sound brutal, cruel, and powerful. Um, that actually links straight back to that use of alliteration, that harsh C sound that we see in clasps the crag with crooked hands. So you've got the direct link from the root through the tree up into the analysis, and each thing needs to link, each point needs to link together. Each tree then represents a paragraph of your writing. And so actually you can't use a tree in isolation if you want a piece of extended writing out of it. You can use that if it's just one piece of close analysis. But if you want an extended piece of writing, you might have a forest of trees, each one representing an individual paragraph. So we now have our plan, our plan, our thoughts, um, everything that we've considered from that original idea. And we're going to turn that now into a piece of extended writing. And for that, we need to look closely at the literacy kit. And if you look at the literacy kit on this tool, it has got all of those analytical connectives that you, you would use, like this suggests, uh, this emphasizes, et cetera, et cetera, that can be deployed uh, in order to make this uh, uh, an extended piece of writing. And I'd like to demonstrate that for you now. We've now got to the part where we're going to do some extended writing from the planning that we've done on Tennyson's The Eagle. Um, a writing system that I use frequently is Point Evidence and Analysis, PEA. And you will see clearly the way this is structured that we now have at the bottom the point. The alliteration is the point, the technique that Tennyson is using. The evidence is the trunk. So I might put a P and an E next to those two places. And the analysis is the top canopy, everything that the student has thought about that particular technique. And so I'm ready to start my writing task. And so I'm going to take that point first. Remembering um, all the time that I've got to stick to that system and that the question I'm answering is about the techniques that Tennyson used to explore the world of the eagle. So an obvious way to start is to actually name that technique from my point in the root of the tree. Tennyson uses alliteration and I might stop and think where because that might just help me to, to complete my sentence so in the opening of his poem the eagle And you can see now that I've made that point. It links totally with the root of the tree. The next thing that I need to do is to provide my evidence and to build my evidence into my paragraph. Um, and of course, my evidence can be found on the trunk of the tree. So I'm going to say, he says, just to make this flow into my sentence, the eagle, and I've got to provide the evidence clasps the crag with crooked hands. Now you can see I've slightly embedded that quote into my sentence, but I've made sure that I've kept the alliteration, all of those C's in the quotation, so that I'm backing up the technique, so that I'm backing up the point. The next thing I need to do is to turn to the analysis, all of those thoughts that the student had um, about that alliteration. And I'm going to go to the literacy kit to help me to move to the next stage. And so I might use um, the term, let's just take, take the first one in the literacy kit, this suggests. Okay, so I'm going to take this suggests. And so I'm now using an analytical connective. And I need to look back at that analysis, okay, and see what it is that I'd like to say about the eagle. So this suggests, um, now uh, already I've, had, I've come across an issue with that particular phrasing, and so I'm going to slightly alter it to make it fit the analysis that I've got still using this phrase. I need to say this harsh sound suggests. So I've split that connective just to make this bit fit. Okay, this harsh, sound suggests. And what is it that I've said up here? That the 
eagle is brutal, cruel, and powerful. And I would go back as a student and I would actually tick that off. And it's a way of making sure, you know, there's awful moments when students forget to use their planning. They've spent ages planning and then they never use it. To actually physically make them connect the extended writing to the hot tour means that they will include everything that they're meant to include. So this harsh sound suggests that the eagle is brutal, cruel and powerful is the first thing that I've ticked off of my analysis. But there are so many other things to say there. Um, I've said about the harsh sound, so the next thing I'm going to choose um, is something else about sound, because alliteration is a sound technique. So I might use, it also suggests, or shows, or sounds like, that the eagle is controlling and strong. Okay, and then I can tick that off. I've just changed the endings to make it fit my sentence. That's all I've done there. Um, the sound makes the eagle sound old, twisted, and gnarled. This is, I'm going back to the literacy kit again, emphasised, which I've said here on my board, by the word, crooked. Okay, and the last thing that I still haven't said um, is that it makes it sound like it's gripping tightly. So the overall sound of the C makes the eagle's grip sound firm and tight. I now have a high grade piece of writing just by using the literacy kit and the hot tool and all I've actually done is all the ideas there is to put in the connectives that are in the literacy kit into the ideas that are in the uh, tool. So I now have Tennyson uses alliteration in the opening of his poem The Eagle. He says the eagle clasps the crag with crooked hands. This harsh sound suggests that the eagle is brutal, cruel and powerful. It also shows that the eagle is controlling and strong. The sound makes the eagle set seem. So I'm going to change that because I don't like it. I've just repeated a word. The sound makes the eagle seem old, twisted and gnarled. This is emphasised by the word crooked. The overall sound of the C makes the eagle's grip sound firm and tight. So in summary, the twig tool helps us build up close analysis. In the root, we put our point. In the trunk of the tree, we put our evidence that supports our point. And then in the branches and the twigs of our tree, the dense, rich canopy, we develop our analysis. And as Nikki has said, the more branches we see in the canopy, the deeper the analysis, and ultimately, the higher the examination grade. This follows the writing pattern of point, evidence, and analysis.